Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to share a research project with you. It's about tackling a major challenge in computer vision, that is motion estimation in video frames. But first, let me explain how I typically approach new projects. I start with spending a lot of time reading new articles and papers about that new topic. Once I feel confident that I understand the core concepts, Depending on the tools I have, I try to simulate a basic version of that algorithm. In this process, I try to identify areas where improvement can be made or new ideas can emerge. Now I want to talk about this challenge and how we developed a new algorithm using this approach. So what is motion estimation? So the objective of this um, algorithm is to uh, determine a motion vector that indicates the displacement of a group of pixels within some images. Uh, specifically in this approach, we start with a current frame that we want to analyze for motion compared to a reference frame First, we divide our frame into blocks of pixels. And for each block, our goal is to locate the most similar group of pixels in the reference frame. The search is performed within a predefined area known as the search window. Once we find the best match or the best block, we report the vector that points from the corresponding block in the reference frame to this best match. There are three popular methods for calculating the differences between two blocks. And in this project, we use some of absolute differences because it's easier to implement and requires uh, fewer hardware resources. So the main application of this algorithm is in video compression, where we often encounter a lot of, uh, lot of redundant information in both the time and spatial domain. For instance, uh, in these test video sequences, uh, if we examine two frames, we might notice that there is minimal pixel variation uh, between them. Consequently, rather than transmitting the entire frames, uh, we could encode and send only the difference between those, uh, these two frames. I'll talk more about uh, video compression in future videos. Other applications of this algorithm include object tracking and video st stabilization. So uh, n now let's talk about the methods. If we examine all the blocks within the search window, we achieve the highest accuracy because we are at checking every possible block. However, this comes at the cost of extensive computational resources. Uh, this algorithm is known as full search. To address this issue, researchers employ predefined patterns to search for the best block. I assume that by following a pattern, the error decreases monotonically, and one popular pattern in this category is the diamond search. Another important method is using the correlation of motion for nearby parts of an image. The concept here is that blocks close together in both space and time domains 
show similar motion characteristics. Hence, we can use these calculated motion vectors to improve our search. For instance, we can adjust the motion patterns or alter the window size based on our prediction of how motion will progress for future blocks. Now, let's consider how we can enhance these algorithms. On one end, we have the full search algorithm, which offers high accuracy but, the, but demands significant computational resources. Conversely, there are faster algorithms like adaptive ones, which sac sacrifice some accuracy for efficiency. So the goal for this project is to develop an algorithm that approaches the performance level of full search, but with a substantially reduced computational demands. So after analyzing motion estimation algorithms, it becomes evident that significant computation is expect, uh, expended on regions without motion. To save resources, we try to identify these motionless areas before starting the search. We achieve this by generating the difference between two consecutive frames and then applying a threshold uh, to highlight the, area, the regions of uh, displaying motion. To further enhance this process in scenarios where numerous blocks within a frame share the same motion vector, we can infer that this motion reflects to global motion. So by shifting a frame by amount of global motion, the resulting frame difference will have even fewer white pixels. After we create the binary mask, we try to assign pixels with motion to blocks of varying sizes. Initially, we begin with a larger block size such as 64 by 64 pixels and compare the sum of pixels within each block against the threshold to determine if the block is stationary. Once identified as static, these blocks can efficiently replace with corresponding blocks from the reference frame. In the second step, we further partition the moving blocks into smaller block blocks of size 8 by 8 pixels and similar to previous step, we identify these static blocks. After the initial steps, we choose different block shapes for our final blocks. We consider square, vertical, and horizontal shapes, and after looking into them, we go with the square shape because it's good at capturing motion uh, in both horizontal and vertical directions. Also, I'll talk about how using deep learning uh, so uh, to make our algorithm even more robust. For higher resolution images like the one we have here, we adjust the block sizes accordingly. We start with a 16 by 16 pixel blocks as the base block. Then we create different structures. So up until now, we implement a model for generating blocks with variable shapes and sizes that can be employed in various block matching algorithms. In the next step, we utilize predictive tools to develop an efficient algorithm for motion estimation. So first, based on anticipated motion, we change the search window range. We use the most frequently accurate motion vector in the previously coded frame to have an estimation for future frame. For example, in this test series, we examine five segments with unique motion patterns and display five frames from each part. 
region 1 has a significant horizontal motion leading us to focus on this direction and enlarge the windows accordingly which is the green line region 2 has no clear dominant motion direction therefore we utilize a symmetrical window region 6 brings a sudden shift to vertical motion so we increase the window size in that direction which is the red line and then we have another symmetrical window for region four and then we see a horizontal dominant motion in region five so we enlarge our window in that direction next before starting the search we examine three blocks with a high chance of being the target block we evaluate these blocks and compare their cost function with the threshold, which is at least 256. If the cost is lower than this threshold, we report the motion vector, therefore saving computations. Otherwise, we shift the search window to the best block and we continue the search. Next, we use two search algorithms to find the best match. In the first approach, we want maximum accuracy, so we search more blocks using a square pattern. If no new block is available after the first stage of searching and early termination hasn't stopped the search, we continue scanning the rem remaining blocks as shown here. In the second approach, we try to make an efficient algorithm. So we employ the small diamond search pattern. For further explanation, I encourage you to read our paper. Finally, we present our results in terms of accuracy and efficiency. For accuracy, we calculate the peak signal to noise ratio for reconstructed frames and compare them with popular methods in this field. We demonstrate that both of our proposed algorithms yield better accuracy. Next, we measure efficiency by counting the number of counting the average number of search blocks. We show that our algorithm achieves considerable accuracy with a lower number of search blocks, highlighting its efficiency. To demonstrate the performance of our algorithm, uh, we, de we develop an application that uh, shows its various components. This app allows users to interact with different settings. So after completing the initial phase of the project, we were focusing on developing a more robust block generation system. Specifically, when we uh, revisit the three options for selecting block shapes, we noticed that the performance of selecting block orientation depends on the particular motion present in that frame. For instance, for horizontal movement, choosing vertical blocks enables us to sample more motion uh, vectors and obtain a better explanation of motion and vice versa for vertical movement. 
To address this issue, we've developed the idea of employing a pre-trained convolutional neural network for feature extraction, followed by constructing a classification model on top of it. This system will take this frame difference as its input and predict the appropriate shape for our blocks as output. Currently, we are in the process of training a model using a large dataset containing frames with various motion characteristics. In, which, in future videos about video compression, I'll explore, explore other ways we can use deep learning to solve this task. See you in later videos.